Hi everyone, my name is Samaya and I'm going to explain um, how to create a digital brochure for the lesson for unit three, setting things in motion. Um, the lesson objective is begin working on your individual project, a digital brochure explaining the science involved in your body, putting an object in motion. Uh, so there were a lot of suggestions for the guidance for instructors on um, how students can create their digital brochure. So they were um, suggesting uh, Sway, Prezi, uh, Google Slides, or PowerPoint. Um, so I want to share a tool today that has been great with creating uh, a digital content for students. So it is called canva.com. So this is a great tool that students and teachers can use to create anything from posters, infographics, brochures, um, they have a lot of templates available. So as you can see, um, you know, depending on what you want to create, they have social media based templates, personal templates such as invitations or cards, business templates, marketing templates where they have the infographic and brochure, which is what I frequently use for my classes. And um, especially at the end of the unit, I like using infographic uh, template. They have um, education templates. So they have lesson plan templates, worksheets and um, much more. So the first thing that you should do with your students is have them create an account so their work can be saved and so they can share their work with you. So the way that you would do that is if you go to the Canva homepage, um, I already have an account, but you can have them create an account and make them sign on with their school account, their school Gmail or, you know, their uh, whatever account is linked with their school account. That way they will always remember the username and password and they can sign on with um, that domain. So once they create an account, there are a lot of, you know, options here. So let's say, you know, we want to create a brochure. So we go to the search bar on top and write brochure um, and the, all the options for brochure templates comes up. Uh, so that's the first step you would want them to do. So let's say you want to create um, a blank brochure, which they can, and they can add their own backgrounds, or a lot of students find it easier to just choose a template. So one thing that you should see here is that a lot of these templates are free. So if you hover over them, it says which one is free. And then it also says um, which ones are not free. So here is a paid one. Here's also another paid one. So just make sure to tell them to choose a free account. Uh, a free template. So once you go to the template, you can see, so they can see which, uh, how it looks like, and then they click use this template. And it brings you to the template page. Now, before we get started on all the features that you have on modifying this template, I would first suggest telling students to name their brochure. So, you would name it for whatever project it is, and they could put their name too on the title, okay? Um, now, as soon as they name it, I would suggest for you to tell them to share it. Now, this is really important because this can help you monitor their progress as they're doing the brochure in real time. So if you want to log in and see how they're doing or if they have a question about their infographic um, after school, you can always log in um, and you can click on the link that they shared with you and you can look at their progress. So there are two ways that they can share this. They can type in your email address. So it says type one or more names or emails. So they type in their teacher's email address here and you will get the notification that this student shared the infographic with you and you will get the link. Once you get the notification and the link, um, it's that same link, similar to a working Google Docs. You're just going to click on that link whenever you need to check their work and all their information will be there. Uh, another way that they can do it is to copy link. So if they click on copy link, the link will be copied to their clipboard and they can paste it to an email or a document where you have, um, if you have an Excel sheet with all the student names and their links for their brochures, um, or if they want to do a peer review, uh, they can also email it to the person that will be doing the peer review. So again, two ways to share it. Okay, so those are the first two things that are very important that I would suggest you tell your students to do. First, to name their 
brochure so they are able to find it once they log in and then next to share it with their teacher. Okay, now once they share it with you, you will have the link. You can use that link whenever um, you need to. Now, there are a lot of options here. So again, this was a brochure. So there are two pages. A lot of times by default, it shows up to a very small scale. So um, by default, when they log in, it'll show like this and it's gonna be very hard for them to work in this scale because it's very small. So another feature that's really important before they get started is to zoom in so they can zoom in to 75%. And it makes it much bigger and easier for them to see. So again, first step, name it, share it, and then zoom in so they're able to see each page and see uh, what they are doing clearly. Uh, again, this is compatible with computer or iPads. Um, and I believe for iPads, you do need to download the app, uh, which can be uh, done either by you or if they have um, the app, uh, information, they can download it on um, the iPad as well, but it is compatible with any um, device. So now we have a lot of options here. Okay, so again, let's say that they don't like this template, they can always change up the template. Okay, um, they can search a template or change uh, the design of the template. And once they finalize their template, there are a lot of options here that you can see, okay? Now, if you go to, first I would tell them to add text boxes for the titles for each, for each uh, section. So if you go to text, you can see that there are so many different options for uh, text. I would suggest something that's readable and not something too fancy. Um, I highly suggest my students just to use these three for their writing and then they could get creative for the title but always when they're writing content or they're writing a paragraph or an explanation I would suggest them to use the heading or subheading okay now once you add in the heading and subheading you can move it around you can change the size you can also change the font and you can make it smaller bigger depending on how you need it uh, another option that you can do is upload photos. So they already, um, you know, they already have photos, stock photos that you can use. So let's say your brochure, our brochure is about energy and motion. Um, so you click energy, they have some stock photos that you can use here. And then you just click on, again, you have to make sure that it's free. So here's a pro, here's free. These are pros. So if you click on the free one, or let's say this one, this is someone in motion. So you click on this one and you have to um, help them format it, make sure they know that they have, they could make it bigger, smaller, position it wherever they need. And then you can upload. So let's say that they don't, um, there's a picture that they saw on Google and it's not available on their stock photos. They can always upload media and then click on upload from device or their Google Drive. So they can click from their device and they choose whatever media that they need from their device. And once it is done, it comes up on this page and you can, um, they click on it and it appears over here on their template. Another thing they can do is add elements. So again, there is a lot to do here. Um, a lot of students get carried away with all of these options. They, you know, they like to get creative. They like to add all these graphic elements. I would suggest you advise them to add their content first. And once you're done with all the content, they can look at in to, the elements to make it more visually appealing. So such as, again, they have to look at the free elements, you know, they can add it and the sizes, they can, um, they can change up and make it smaller and so on. And they can change the backgrounds if they click on backgrounds, uh, they can add audio files, they can add video files. Again, if you are printing, this infographic for them to physically have in their portfolios, um, then advise them not to use the audio or video files. Um, but if it's completely digital, then they can. And that is about it for how to make their brochure. Uh, so again, they can add the text boxes to any, uh, any place on their template. And I have a completed template here based on the lesson that we're doing, um, which is uh, energy and motion. And this is the completed template. 
This can be given to students who need extra supports who cannot or will have difficulties going through all of these features and adding in their own text boxes, adding in their own titles. This can be given to those students just so they can you know, create a rough draft and they can put in all their information here, which is um, already set. So the title was set. This is based on the template that was given uh, for the teachers. So uh, this is the first page with the title, front cover, back cover, and this is when you open it. So all this information is here, whatever is required, and this can be an extra support for students who may need it. And again, this is a great tool, not just for brochures, but for any other uh, digital content that students would like to create. And I hope this helps. Thank you.